Finally, one more quick clip on solving quadratic equations via factoring. So the trick or the, the problem in this, this next problem that I'd like to illustrate is that this equation is not set equal to zero. That rule that we talked about a couple segments ago was called the zero product rule. It wasn't called the negative 10 product rule, it's only the zero product rule. So you have to get zero on one side of this equation. So the only way to make that become zero is to add 10. And I'm gonna kinda show that I'm adding it to both sides. And so now what I have is 2y squared plus that 12y that was on the left, but I have a plus 10 on the left, and now I have zero on the right. So now things are cool. Now I can use what's called the zero product rule. And so I've got to solve this by factoring. Remember my broken record. The first step in factoring is to take the greatest common factor out first. This problem has a two that goes into every one of those. So you gotta get it out. You know, it's not always crucial. In this particular case, it's not gonna be crucial, but it sure does make your um, final batch of work a lot easier. So if you would just pull out the two, so two times y squared is two y squared, then I need a six y here, because two times six y is 12 y, and finally I need a five right here. So I've taken my first step and taken the two out first. I now have a trinomial that has a 1 in front of the squared term. That's an easier problem, because then I'm just looking for two numbers that multiply to be 5. I'm just going to put a little reminder here. Multiply to be 5, and they need to add to be 6. Um, so be careful, that's 5 and 1. Multiplies to be 5, and adds to be 6. So I put a y in the front of each of these, and then I just stick a plus 5 in one of them, a plus 1 in the other, and I bring that 2 down. This um, property for solving um, equations is called the zero product rule. But you only set those products that have the variable in them equal to zero. You don't set this two equal to zero for, for uh, two reasons. It doesn't have the variable, and it's not true. Two does not equal zero. It only helped us in making this a little bit easier to factor. So what I do is I set the y plus five equal to zero right here, and then I set the y plus 1 equal to 0. If there's any chance you're starting to get to the point where you could skip the step of subtracting 5 from both sides, I mean, you don't bother to write it down, that's okay. That's essentially a skill you need. Sometimes we call that transposing. But if you need to show that step to keep yourself organized, then I am subtracting 5 from both sides, and one of my answers is a negative 5. And here I'm subtracting one from both sides, and one of my answers is a negative one. They should both check. I think I've done this problem already, and they, they do. I'm not going to take the time to check those right now. Let's do one more problem. problem is equal to zero. So that's cool. It's called the zero product rule. And our first step is to factor the expression on the left hand side. And so I'm going, mm, greatest common factor. It looks like there is one. Um, it doesn't have a constant term. This is not a trinomial, but it's also not the difference of squares either, because this x is not a perfect square. But I see that there's an x in each one of those. So the first step in factoring is to always get that common factor out. And what I do, I need an x here because x times x is x squared, and here I'm going to need a minus 9. I'm done with factoring this problem. This is, can't be factored. It's only an x minus 9. It's not an x squared minus 9. That would be factorable. The zero product rule says to set any of the factors in the, on the left side equal to 0. So this has the, contains the variable. So I'm going to set x equal to 0, and then I'm also going to set the x minus 9 equal to 0. And then I'm going to add 9 to both sides and find out that the two solutions for this problem, one of them is 0 and one of them is 9. Look at the original problem. So if I were to check this, I have x squared minus 9 times x equals 0. Tell me if you take 0 and square it, which is 0, minus 9 and you multiply it times 0, which is 0, isn't 0 minus 0 equal to 0? Yes. And then 
let's go ahead and check the other solution. So we've got x squared minus 9x equals 0 is the original equation. Let's put a 9 in for x. So 9 squared is 81. Minus 9 times whatever x is, which is 9, and is 81 minus 81 equal to 0. And we get to check. Matter of fact, everything that we've done, including factoring and solving equations, because factoring you can multiply out to see if you get the original problem. And in these problems, you can take your solutions and put them into the original equation to, to see if it checks. We're done with solving equations, quadratic equations, by factoring. My next segment is going to include some applications of this.